Hey, you found us here on Homebrewer TV. So glad you could join me. I have got to tell you guys, everybody has been wonderful with all of the emails you've sent me with my request of what can we do in this show to make it better for you. And let me share with you the big requests. Number one, yeast. Now get an understanding, we're going to be covering this over multiple shows because obviously yeast is a major, major thing to discuss. We also want to talk about hops, again over multiple shows, and grains. Wow, makes up all of beer, doesn't it? With the exception of water. And we're going to talk about setting up your water right for different types of beers. I know I'm excited because it's what you wanted. Now don't worry, we're not going to leave out all the other cool parts about this piece and this piece of equipment, how to make this ourselves, or what is new out there for us to be able to buy. Because it's so exciting. So I'm excited about the rest of this year and thank you everyone for all the time you spent telling me about it. I don't want to, I got to say something. You know, I'm kind of a dark beer guy. If you love stouts, oh, oh yes, BYO, Brew Your Own Magazine has got an incredible issue on stouts. It's got recipes and discussions of stouts. This is a really good magazine. You might want to check it out. Go right onto our website. Just click on BYO that's over on the left-hand side. It'll take you to get the magazine. And you get a free copy to try it out. Now, I have to admit, I have one complaint about the magazine. It's only published monthly. I want it weekly, Brad. <laughs> Please. This is so good. I love the magazine. Anyway, guys, we have got a lot of things to discuss today. And we have some beer to taste. <laughs> We're going all imperial. Yes, indeed. You stay with me right here on Homebrewer TV. segment sponsored by homebrewtalk.com. Join us and talk about your homebrew ideas, questions, recipes, or anything else to help with your homebrewing enjoyment. homebrewtalk.com. I don't know if you've experienced it, but I certainly have. One of the big problems that I've run into is some of my beers just flat get away from me, it seems like, when they're fermenting. And I've had messes, I've blown off lids off of my plastic buckets, excuse me. I've had messes on the floor from uh, blow off tubes coming out. So I tr I've tried a couple different things and we're gonna try something even newer today and see if it works. So let me show you what I've done. So here's the lid to my stainless steel fermenter with the hole, of course, that we're going to be releasing the CO2. And here's where the problem comes. It gets agitated so much, it's spilling out. It is blowing past the lock. Didn't work. So my idea was, come in with a big vessel and a big old blow-off tube. I would fill it about that full of sanitized water and let it go at it. I ended up having it spill over the thing. So what I thought was a simple solution was I would just take this that's spilling out, set it inside of a bucket, and you know something? This worked great. Till I realized how much was actually spilling out and filling this bucket meant I was losing beer out of my fermenter. I didn't want to do that. I want to keep every drop I can. So, I've come up with another idea, partially from ideas I've gotten over things I've read in stories in BYU or, or BYO and all the other great magazines and books. Here's what we're going to try. 
So here's what I'm going to try. I have a one gallon mayonnaise container that's plastic, so we know it's food grade. And I'm going to drill a hole in the top of it so I can add a normal fermentation lock. Then I'm going to drill a hole toward the top of it and add the tube from my fermenter that's going to go into the top. And that's where I'm going to be releasing the gases and everything else that seems to be coming out when it really gets going. What I'm going to also add is down low I'm going to add another tube coming out which is going to give me a back inlet into my fermenter so hopefully a lot of that beer that's been lost goes right back into fermentation. So I'm going to drill my first hole. I'm using a step drill so that I have a nice round hole to seal my stopper. Okay. Now, of course, I broke this lid on purpose just to show you what not to do. <laughs> yeah, right. So with another lid and a good block of wood, we're going to go to take two of drilling lids. My hole which will hold fermentation lock. So very gently, we're going to drill a hole here. We're going to drill a hole once, kind of in the middle, and then we're going to drill our drain hole down toward the bottom. The hole in the middle is an idea I have that it might let me collect yeast in here. I'm kind of squeezing the plastic to support where I'm drilling. Once I've gotten through the plastic with the first cut, now it's really easy to trim it out. And finally, our last breather hole. Into each of the holes, I'm just adding a simple rubber grommet that you can get at any hardware store. Just make sure that the hole size is appropriate to your tubing. So I've added my three grommets to my cut holes. The grommets fit nice and tight and do a really good seal. Now you'll notice, right here, I've got a little plug in this grommet. Because I'm not going to be using this hole initially, I want to use this one for drain back. This one I'll be catching stuff and not draining back, so if I get yeast if I want. So this plug can work in either one of these two holes, but only one of the two holes will be used during fermentation. So here's our setup. We've got our inlet hose coming from the fermenter, and we have our outlet hose which will drain back the beer that's spit up into here, along with yeast using the bottom hole. These tubes will probably get trimmed when I figure out exactly where I'm going to set this and have it mounted. But for now, I think I've got a way of not wasting so much beer. Now, I haven't forgotten you guys with your plastic bucket fermenters, which I still use also. I just added a second hole into my lid and I'll have my system set up. It'll work well whether it is a conical fermenter with a stainless steel top, plastic fermenter, or for you guys that are using your carboys, this is great. Two, two uh, outlets already. What I'm going to do if I use this is I would put a tube through here that would run down a bit so that it'll drain back easier and not be fighting the, the release of the uh, gases. But this system will now work for all three. Conical fermenter with a stainless steel lid, plastic buckets, and <laughs> your glass uh, carboys. Just a thought, I think this is going to work great. And it may solve wasting my beer. So now, I need to find my beer and have another one. You guys need to get out there and make some more beer. Brew the beer I drink. <laughs> cool little bumper sticker. Or you can stick it on the wall or wherever else you might want. Would you like one? Well, let me tell you how to get it. There's an, an organization called the American Homebrewers Association. It costs next to nothing to belong. And it's a fabulous organization that's going to keep you more up to date on what's going on. You also get 
a magazine with it. And I personally can never have enough to read. I want to know more and more about beer. And these magazines are filled with information about well, brewing, events, even get-togethers of the actual AHA. So, you may want to give some thought to join this organization. You can always check at them out on their website. Here's the listing. And come on and join us. We'll all have fun. Well, we're in the tasting room. You know, it's one of my favorite places. And today, it's all about Imperials. Imperials, in my mind, mean bigger beers, a whole lot more flavor, greater alcohol content. Oh, I just get excited thinking about it because I love big beers. And we're going to go from one end of the spectrum to the other end because we have an Imperial IPA to do and we have an Imperial Stout to do. I know, can you imagine all the flavor explosions that's going on here? Well, do you realize the Imperial Stouts and Imperial Beers were basically put together in England back in the mid-1700s to send across the Baltic Sea to Russia during Catherine the Great's era. The people loved the extra taste and flavors and higher alcohol content and it also allowed them to be shipping these beers over a longer period of time and they were able to stay in good condition. Well, let's get started. Our first beer we're going to be doing is, is from the Joseph James Brewing Company. Now we've talked in great detail about this brewing company down in Henderson, Nevada. And their beers so far have been really good. Well, this is their Imperial IPA. Indeed. You guys know, I'm not a big IPA person. But I've been finding out during some of these tastings, if the IPAs are really done well, oh my goodness, are they delicious. So I'm becoming a bit of a hophead because of it. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> also, these beers are sipping beers. They're not big pint beers, they're sipping beers. So we need the appropriate sipping glass. And also you've noticed, big bottle here. Yeah, the crew wants their flavor. Well, this is gorgeous. I would call this a lovely amber ale. Now this is 9.2% alcohol. And it's got a 90 international bittering units. Lots and lots of Simcoe hops and lots and lots of Cascade hops. Well, I think it's gorgeous. I know. I keep saying every beer is gorgeous. Boy, if we could only see women in the same frame that I see beers. Boy, would that make them happy. Well, let's get a taste here. Or smell, I should say. Oh, this is really a nice floral hoppy smell. I'm discovering that some of the Imperial Stouts, or no, some of the IPAs, that the taste was, to me, so bitter. I just don't think they were using the hops that worked really well. Well, this smells delightful. So let's give this a taste. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Okay, this is an extremely delicious beer, and it is very hoppy. There's a hop explosion that's gone on in my mouth. But it's not a nasty taste. It's a delicious hoppy taste. I don't like the, the, the nasty, bitter, bitter, bitter with no real flavor hops. But boy, this is well done. I think you're going to like this one. I know I am. Mmm. Well, if you haven't spotted the label on this beer yet. It's a Sam Adams. Now, I've got to admit to you, I don't go out and buy a lot of Sam Adams beer. I enjoy their commercials. I enjoy their website. But this, to me, is a big brewing company. And quite honestly, I like to go with the smaller ones. 
but I wanted a really imperial stout, and I had a hard time finding one. Sam Adams stepped up, and here it is. Well, obviously, this imperial stout was truly brewed for the Catherine the Great people. Oh, my goodness. Sam, you smell good. Well, 9.2% alcohol, and it's got a 50 IBU. Ooh, look at the darkness on this baby. This is beautiful. Hmm. And it's the chocolate covered, a uh, colored uh, head. Mm. Oh, this has got a magnificent grain smell. Uh, th the malts are just incredible. You can smell the chocolates and the coffees. Oh, and the crew's going, taste it. Well, here we go. Okay. Sam's knocked it out of the ballpark. A lot of Imperial Stouts I find too hoppy. They try to build the hops way up. Well, Sam didn't. This balance is perfect. I took a sip of this and what I wanted to do is find a nice fireplace, snuggle up with someone, and sip on some Sam Adams. Wow, I like this. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. You all know I'm kind of a dark beer kind of guy, but both of these beers are delicious. And I love the fact 9.2% alcohol. Well, for the Imperial IPA, I think it's great. You're going to like it. I'm giving it two thumbs up. For the Imperial Stout, I got to go with three. This one has just got this flavor explosion and it has this warm sensation as it goes down. Oh, both fantastic beers. You're going to want to try them. And Sam, you've surprised me. I may have to try some more of yours. Well, guys, go find some beers to taste. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I know I had a great time. Hope you did too. Keep those emails coming. Boy, they have been so good to give me information of what you want to see in this show. Also, comments below is fine. Hit the comments word. It lets you in. And don't forget, check out our sponsors. <laughs> They're the reason that we can continue doing this. So, till next week, we'll see you right here on Homebrewer TV.